And she was just like, you need to stop doing that. And then I tried to change the subject. I go, how is school going, boys? And my sons tell me, well, we didn't have school today, technically. I'm like, well, I, what's going on? He said, well, there was like a school shooting drill. I never heard of this. You know what this is? They have drills that they make kids do uh, where they practice what to do if somebody comes to shoot up their school. I'd never heard that before. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> then I had to tell my sons the truth. I didn't want to tell them this shit. Son, son, listen to me. <laughs> fuck that drill. <laughs> somebody comes to your school and, and wants to shoot it up, I'm just going to be honest with you. You probably going to get shot, nigga. I'm just being real. <laughs> You got a famous dad. I talk a lot of shit. They are gonna be gunning for you, little buddy. <laughs> Just stay low and run in a zigzag pattern and don't try to save anybody, son. Do you understand me? Why would you have kids rehearse for some shit they have no control of? All you're doing is training these kids to worry. It's the stupidest drill I've ever heard of. And while you're in there training them during these drills, and listening and learning like the other kids, sitting in the back, going, where are we supposed to meet? If you're a parent, this shit is terrifying. This shit is real scary. All the parents is looking at each other crazy because we know as parents that one of us is raising the shooter. <laughs> Just don't know which one of us it is. All we know for sure is that if you're a white parent, the chances that it's you exponentially higher than the rest of us. <laughs> Shooting up school is a white kid's game. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. You know, I hated school too. It never occurred to me. Kill everybody in school? <laughs> it's fucking crazy. Just do what I did, nigga. Try some things. Have you skipped school, nigga? Skip school. <laughs> Take a walk and meet some other kids. Fuck school, nigga. My... <laughs> some scary shit. I've given this a lot of thought. I don't see any peaceful way to disarm America's whites. There's only one thing that's going to save this country from itself. Same thing that always saves this country from itself. And that is African Americans. <laughs> right. And I know the question that a lot of y'all have in your minds is, should we do it? <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah, we should do it. Listen. No matter what they say or how they make you feel, remember, this is your country too, it is incumbent upon us to save our country. And you know what we have to do. This is a fucking election year. We got to be serious. Every able-bodied African-American must register for a legal... That's the only way they'll change the law. <laughs> I hate guns, personally. I can't stand them. Yeah, but I have several. <laughs> I don't want them, but I feel like I need them. Don't forget where I live. I live in Ohio. And anyone that knows anything about Ohio knows that even the word Ohio is an old Native American word. It means, literally, a land of poor white people.
And I don't know what's going on down here, but in my experience, uh, poor white people love, and I mean they fucking love, <laughs> heroin. <laughs> they can't seem to get enough of it. I didn't even know what I was looking at at first. I was just driving, like, why are all these white people so sleepy out here? These things. <laughs> it's really bad. As a matter of fact, I was coming out of a nightclub the other night in Dayton, and I'd park my car in an alley, and no one was out there. I didn't have no bodyguards or nothing. I was home. I figured everything was fine. And as soon as I opened my car door, all by myself, suddenly, uh, one of these heroin-addicted whites just pops out of a trash can. It scared the shit out of me. I screamed, ah! <laughs> and then I realized it was a woman. She was fucked up. She said, <coughs> Hey, man. Hey, man. Relax, okay? <coughs> I'm sick, all right? I need some drugs, man. Please, I'll suck your dick for five dollars, man. I was like, ugh. <laughs> Two. Obviously, I'm joking. <laughs> this opioid crisis is a crisis. I see it every day. It's as bad as they say. It's ruining lives. It's destroying families. Sadly, you know what? As me of us, these white folks look exactly like us during the crack epidemic. <laughs> you know, it's really crazy to see. And all this shit they talk about on the news about how divided the nation is, I don't believe it. I feel like nowadays we're getting a real good look at each other. <laughs> it's wild because I even have insight into how the white community must have felt watching the black community go through the scourge of crack. Because I don't care either. <laughs> Hang in there, whites. Just say no. What's so hard about that? <laughs> Remember when y'all said that to us? But it's okay. There's no grudges. Now you finally got it right. Once it started happening to your kids, you realize it's a health crisis. These people are sick. They are not criminals. They are sick. Be that as it may, I'm armed to the teeth. <laughs> First gun I bought was a 12-gauge shotgun. I didn't want the gun. Remember, though, I'd moved to a farm, and I was sitting there on the porch, and I see a white dude walking across my property, entitled, like he's supposed to be there. He had a rifle over his shoulder, too. Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> I said, what the fuck is this guy doing on my property? I was mad as shit, but I was unarmed. So I ended up just waving to this motherfucker like a bitch. I was just like... <laughs> and as soon as he got far enough away, I ran to my car and sped to Kmart. <laughs> this is in a rural white area, and remember, I was nervous because a guy was on my property. I'm black, and I was sweaty. You know what I mean? And I ran to the gun counter, black and sweaty, sweating and black. And I looked up at the nigga, I was like, <sighs> I look like a slave or something. <laughs> I said, I need a gun immediately, like that. Just like that. The guy didn't answer, no questions. He just grabbed a 12-gauge shotgun, handed it to me. I never even held a gun before. I'm not a dummy, though. I'm like, well, I need, some, I need some bullets, too. Put two box of shells on the counter. He said, all right, buddy, which box do you want? And I didn't know. One box had pictures of some ducks on it. <laughs> the other box had pictures of some deer. I said, well, what's that box with them ducks? He said, oh, that there's bird shot. And then he goes, just like this, I'm not exaggerating, he goes, that won't kill a man.
He said, it'll just pepper them up nicely. I said, what the fuck? Pepper? <laughs> you know what it means to pepper a motherfucker up? It means that when the shell explodes, hot BBs will shoot out of the barrel of the gun, not killing a motherfucker, but penetrating their skin and shallow flesh. Boy, that's gotta hurt. Hot BBs? Ha <laughs> ha! Remember when Dick Cheney shot a motherfucker in the face and he lived? That was bird shot. I said, well, what's that box with the deer on it? He goes, oh, that there's buckshot. That'll put a hole in the goddamn truck if you wanted to. <laughs> Come with the deer up and shook it. <laughs> I thought he was trying to trick me. I was like, do you have a box uh, with a picture of a white dude trespassing on it? Because it's <laughs> exactly the strength I'm looking for. <laughs> but I didn't know that if you're defending your home with a shotgun, the formula dictates that you're supposed to buy both boxes. This was not a formula that I was familiar with. It goes like this. The six shots in a 12-gauge shotgun, so when you load the gun, you load it like this. First shot, bird shot. Next shot, buck shot. Bird shot, and then after that, gun's Jamaican. Buck shot, buck shot, buck shot. <laughs> She got a picture of it, okay? Like, say I'm in bed and I'm sleeping, and suddenly my wife wakes me up. David, David, wake up. And I'm like, oh, oh, look who's coming around. And I pull my dick over the top of my pajamas. <laughs> and she says, no, I hear something. I go, oh, this bitch. So I get up, I grab the gun. I say, wait here, baby, I'll go check it out. Just lock the door behind me. <laughs> oh my God, she's right, right there in the kitchen is a heroin addicted white, and <laughs> he's digging through the change job by the door. Hmm, hmm, I work really hard for that change. I gotta do something. So first, I wrap the shotgun. Hey, motherfucker, click clack. <laughs> That's a test. That click clack sound will stop a rational human being in their tracks. But sure enough, this person is not rational. They're sick on drugs. They're digging in the change. Hmm, hmm, I gotta act fast. This nigga's almost got a dollar fifty. I warned you, Berkshire. And there it goes. Hot BBs will permeate his yellow heroin skin. Remember, I'm not killing him, I'm just Peppering him up nice. He lets out a heroin scream. And that should be the end of it. But, uh-oh, I miscalculated. 